the fuck out. I don't agree with you, right? From Philadelphia, it's the Richie and Caputo Show. Hi, and welcome to the Richie and Tapuna Show. I'm Heather Barton. We already went through all that in the intro. With me, Heather Barton. <laughs> oh, you don't want to do that no more? I said we, we always, always say that. that. Oh, it's me? No, the other guy. Yeah. And, and, and I'm Richie and Tapuna. Yeah, do what I actually doing. So, so what get, did you do this weekend? It's, you I'm, look really fucked up right I now. I am. I'm, I'm a little beat up, but I, I just came from a you got 50th. Beat up? Oh, I'm beat up. Someone beat you up? Yeah. Who? Your Knocked wife? Knocked my fucking teeth out. Wow. But uh came from a 50th birthday party, Anthony Simon Sissy's birthday party last night. Well, till the this morning. I wasn't invited. Neither was I. I was invited the last minute. But anyway, we have How some we have some footage of it for you to, to enjoy. Oh. Leave them there. Let's go back and drink. Oh, leave it. Go oh, back to drink. Fuck it. Oh my God. Seriously, why? Take it all the way up. Wait, there. Leave Richie went up higher. Oh. Oh. Leave it a little higher. Hold on there, Viagra. <laughs> The price is right. The price is right. Leave it aside, fools. Don't drink. Don't drink. The price is right. Five hundred. I'm going to price is right. Oh my God, Rich. Wait for the fall off the end. Jump. We'll see you next Wednesday. Jump. And when you get to the end, you're in deep shit. Oh my God. Go. Naked women? No, it wasn't that kind of part. Epic. On PhiladelphiaSpeaks.com, people host information about different neighborhoods. Kensington was one of them. And although most of the posts were positive, there was one guy that responded to someone using the term Kenzo. Randy from Alabama said, people from Kensington are Kensingtonians. It's true. Unless, of course, you happen to be white trash from Kensington. Then you are simply a Kenzo. I can't believe how people from Kensington have embraced that term. Maybe they don't understand the rest of the city uses it in a derogatory manner. Well, that's why we like it, because it's right. basically saying, fuck everybody else. Right. As in, we had some real white trash move in, typical Kenzos, or real fucking Kenzos. And the neighborhood has always been referred to as Kensington, never Kenzo. That's not true. Right. Well, I, this guy. And he he's from be, Alabama, so who the fuck? Well, cares? he says his name is. That's his name. But he can't be from here because he wouldn't say. We don't say that. We're Kensingtonian. No, we don't say that it's Kenzo. Like the the neighborhood. The neighborhood is we Kenzo. don't call it Kenzo. No, the people are of the neighborhood right. are Kenzos, and the ones that use the term right now, it's it. We have it as a positive thing. It's not anything negative. It's not any. We don't think it's anything bad. Right. You know what I mean? No. So. If you don't like it, you know, then go fuck, fuck yourself. You. Kenzo but salute. that's why we have the title Kenzo Pride, because we're proud of being a Kenzo. And if it was given as an insult, it's only because the people, you know, need to put something down that they don't understand and they fear. They fear us. Hmm. She got people. She got, got people. people. In local news, it was reported that the Philadelphia Transportation Authority's Give Respect, Get Respect campaign is an effort to promote safety among drivers, bicyclists, and pedestrians. Since May, police have issued hundreds of warnings to drivers who are texting and cyclists who are riding on sidewalks. They have also handed out safety brochures to pedestrians crossing the street. Pennsylvania currently has no statewide law that bans drivers from using handheld cell phones or from writing, sending, or receiving text messages while driving. But PA does have a partial ban. State legislation is pending right now. I know motherfuckers that got tickets for being on their cell phone in the car. Because in Philly, that's what I said, some states allow their government to pass the wall. So in December of 09, Nutter signed into the law. So you know people that got 
tickets for... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just only said that to verify that last week you said it's not even a law. In PA. In Philadelphia. Did I, I didn't say Philadelphia. All right. Roll, State roll, law. Roll the tape. Roll the fucking I'm tape. I'm making more work for you. <laughs> we didn't say it on the show. You did. Yes, you did. Did I? Yes, you did. You said that's not even a law. It's not a law in PA. It's a law. Where, I don't where? live in Philly. You just admitted on... Oh, <gasps> my God. <laughs> I know. I moved out. <laughs> Miss Kensington out. doesn't live in Philly. I know. <laughs> anyway, the law restricts Anywho. motorists driving within the city limits from talking or texting while they're on their cell phones. The law currently exempts hands-free units, so you can plug it in and hook it up and Bluetooth. put it on speakerphone, right. Bluetooth, whatever. But driver's court will receive a $75 fine. But I think it's hysterical that they're doing it to people on bikes and like, who can text on a bike anyway? Like, they do it. You, but it's you ever go so downtown? Just don't even do it. Like, don't even text while you're driving. Like, what's the point? They can wait. The person can wait. It's not an emergency. Like, wait. I've like, been talking on a cell over. phone while driving since 1988. Yeah, with I had the my big, big giant <laughs> Flintstone. <phone>. Hello. <laughs> I you had to hang it out the window. It had a suitcase with it. <laughs> well, we've talked a lot about how the city cut the budget for the land care program in the past, but. The Kensington South Neighborhood Advisory Council is continuing efforts to clean up empty lots. KSNAC services the southern portion of Kensington, which is basically Fishtown. Well, now it's Northern Liberties. By organizing the community and acting as a liaison between community residents and municipal services, neighborhood residents kept complaining about blight. So the KSNAC created a list of all of the cleanup organizations in the city. Then they inventoried all the vacant land and determined which lots need care. Well, I would think all of them do. I guess they prioritize. Right. They neighborhood eyes. Right. Uh, they next contacted the appropriate city authorities. Then they started the process in April 2011 and have held at least six cleanup sessions and more are scheduled to take place throughout the summer. For more that's, information, that's go. Good. For more information, go to the website. Here it is. Here's the number two. That's very interesting. I'm making more work for for the editor. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, since you gave up on that, you quit. <laughs> now you do nothing again but sit here and sweat. I am. Wonderful. I am sweating. Philly pools have been so overcrowded this summer. Speaking that of the, sweating. Yeah. Philly pools have been so overcrowded this summer. Speaking that of the sweating. Local pool staff has had to call police in for backup. The new strategy for keeping everyone cool is to allow a certain number of people in for a half hour and blow a whistle and allow the other half a turn, which, mm -hmm. you know, back in the day at McVeigh and all, they used to do that for, I don't know, boys turn, girls turn. Yeah. And just it sucked. Like, out. you had to get out, you know what I mean, and stand on the side. Did you have to readjust your bathing cap? No, I didn't wear one there. That was up at uh, Schmidt's. Schmidt's, you had yeah. to wear bathing caps. I remember that. Yeah. I had the coolest one, of course. Of course. Anyone wearing you? a wet bathing suit has to stand on the side. That's how they check. They say, you're wet. You're already in. And Yeah. So how many times a day do they do that? I would just bring a dry because bathing suit I with me. Because I would say that, <laughs> that would only work one time. Right. Well, how the fuck can they deter? Everybody's wet after the first time they go in. So how you the fuck can they on the side. You're dry in five minutes. I think they put them outside the gates. But. But. And so Sounds forth. Like Oh, there's some unruly and bratty kids that have to ruin everything and don't like follow the plan. In the pool. So now they had to call cops in for backup, for you know, to help organize this. Philly police are detailed to 47 pools daily. I think that's a total waste of. Dollars. I was thinking the same thing, and, and uh, 33 no other pools sense. have some police presence. So. So how do they determine which pools get them and which pools don't? I guess the ones where the kids bring guns with them, you know what well, I mean? Because the, be the lifeguards pool. are like, you know, afraid of the kids nowadays. Well, in a letter to the editor section of the Northeast Times website, a reader warns Tycone residents. Summers ago, a two. young... Oh, I thought that was like number two. Because that is a number two, isn't it? It is a number two. So I thought like that was line Again, two. I'm saving letters. Really? Yes. Two I summers recycled, ago, so. a young red-haired man came to his door and offered to clip his hedges. $20. Stupidly, he's still waiting for the guy to clip his head just now. He's fucking right. He took him up on it, asking for a 50 that he claimed another neighbor paid him with. He told him he didn't have change, but paid him $20. As soon as he shut the door, the guy was gone and didn't cut the hedges. No surprise. 
and they call, or they complain, or they just want to make themselves look like an idiot. He's warning the public. He said, maybe I should have had a clue that, you know, he wasn't. How really do you know do what it. he the fuck is thinking? That's what I want to know. It was in the fucking article, Richard. And it said what he was thinking in it the article? It said what he said. This is what he said to the. To the I don't know that because I only read what it, what it said here. Okay, well, I'm know. telling you. He said he should have realized that something was up because the guy wasn't that... carrying no equipment. Well, hello. <laughs> maybe he thought it was in the truck, you know? Right. right. So he did the scam all over the Northeast, and he was back on his porch 8.30 in the morning last week. And he had the same offer to do the hedges. The From same a different guy, guy? Same guy. Same guy. Wow. And he did said, he give him a 20 again? No, he said, I told him I knew his game, you know what I mean? He swore up and down that it wasn't him. He wasn't the one that did it. And he said, but he, he told him, the one thing he said to him was, I never did your hedge, hedges. And he goes, well, that was one thing that he said that that was true because he never he did. Never did <laughs> he never did He's still waiting. Hedges. So, so for the guy who got paid the twenty dollars, could you please go cut that fucking guy's head? Just please. He, he's not really he's cutting still anybody's sitting on hedges. The porch. We don't even have hedge cutters. I have hedge cutters. My husband actually bought hedge cutters because he's addicted to buying things at Home Depot. The X. I just thought he said don't he's have a hedges. dick that bought. We don't have hedges, and he bought <laughs> Didn't hedge Didn't it sound cutters. like she said he's a dick that bought them? Probably from Home Depot. subconsciously. But well, you you were saying he's addicted to buying. <laughs> he's addicted. And I thought you said he's addicted. <laughs> he would that. go to Home Depot and just buy things like that he didn't need. <laughs> See, you, he said it. Oh, I didn't. So what's this guy's name? Barry Creedon Wedenberg? Yeah, in Tycone. So everybody in Tycone. Just with watch. that name, you deserve to get beat for 20. <laughs> watch your hedges. I bet you got teased a lot in school. So did you. Because why would he have a hyphenated name? I don't fucking know. Maybe he's married. Well, I heard this story from a close friend of mine. It happened on their block, and I don't want to say anybody's name, but it was reported on NBC.com that two girls are safe at home in Kensington after taking a long bike ride last Thursday night with a registered sex offender. On a bike? Yeah, he took... Well, he have he a bicycle on, built for three? You're so... Oh, my God. He had a bike. They had bikes. He took them for a bike ride. Oh. And they were going for hours, like hours and hours. How can you kidnap someone... That goes willingly? On a bike. Um... If he's on a bike and they're on a bike, couldn't they make a right turn at any time or U-turn? That's what I don't they understand. They were 10 and 12. Well, he obviously is influential to these kids because sex offenders do try to lure kids They in. practice, right. So right. They were lured. So there's reasons right. why they right. went and why they stayed with them all those and hours. Just in case people wanted to know, like, how could you kidnap someone on a bike? I, that's why I asked that question. It wasn't kidnapping. It, it, they're not even charging them with anything yet. They're looking into it to see if, if anything was done to these girls. But... It said um, they began searching for him at 9.30 p.m. Uh, the girls ages 10 and 12 uh, went with the guy, 30-year-old man, who was convicted of rape, aggravated, indecent assault, and corrupting a minor in 2000. The parents knew the girls went with the man, hmm. okay? But they don't know if the parents knew that he was a sex offender. Well, I doubt which, that. That's what I'm saying. Like, they put this in the article, which But even, me up. even still, why would you let your fucking 12... Well, that's what I'm trying to understand, Especially people. if you don't know the if person. If a grown man is right. showing interest in your young girls, there's a reason. Message. Don't let your kids go for bike rides with strange 30-year-old men. And remember, Period. only you can prevent forest fires. Exactly. It's so all mixed up. All right, well, ten times, Richie, don't forget the slut walk. Oh, that's line 10. You see what I'm saying? That's why I, I yeah. didn't say two. Right. Okay. Don't forget the slut walk well, on Saturday. Well, yeah, I didn't know that there was more stories. <laughs> there was, it wasn't the second one. So from now on, should yeah. I do first, second, third? No, you don't have to do any of that. That's just. It keeps my mind. I know I can focus on how many stories and kind of time it that well, way. Well, you're too. here. So you don't understand. He's Heather's, not a professional. Heather's here, and I'm just way the fuck up here. So she's like, like you're eight track. Don't you forget don't even the slut walk. Stupid you look on when you Saturday, say like that, August sixth. Everybody 6th. knows that you are the dumb one. <laughs> don't forget the slut walk on Saturday, August sixth, where Heather will be the master of ceremony. Everyone will gather at Con Park at Eleventh and Pine, and then up at Dilworth Plaza, there will be tons of festivities. I mean, festivities. <laughs> Step off one. time is eleven a.m. And remember, you don't have to be a slut. To dress like one. And if you dress like one, you're probably Heather Boynton. <laughs> you don't, don't deserve to be raped or sexually harassed, as Heather it always is, right? 
You got raped. How many times do you think totally you were raped? Sexually harassed. Like visually raped. Oh, How many times? I don't pay. I don't even pay visually. attention to people. <laughs> Girl, all these people. I just ripped your shirt off right now. You didn't even know. Stand against the treatment of victims. What? What happened? Where am I? At? So come out and take a stand against the treatment of slut victims. Not slut. Get the fuck out. I only read what you write. That's not what I wrote, you jackass. Oh, it jackass. said slutty victim. What the fuck were you thinking? In Springfield, Georgia, a man called 911 to report that two men broke into his home. Deputies responded around 4 a.m. to the home and were told by the two men in the home that people in a back bedroom had broken into this home. But no intruders were found. The men were so high on methamphetamine, they called police on themselves. The suspects faced several charges, including manufacturing and possessing methamphetamine. What the fuck were you thinking? What the fuck were you thinking? <laughs> Can you imagine we all skits now? There's people in the house. I swear to God, he's sitting right on me. Give me another hit. Give me another hit. Oh, you gotta love math. Great I don't drug. Know. I like how it smells. I don't like the taste of it. Yeah, I've never smelled it. I'm thinking of starting though, because it'd make me clean my house. It went right the fuck over her head. Uh, it smells like cat piss. Who the fuck likes that smell? A lot of people, because I really? go in people's houses and smell that and, smell. And, and, and nine, <laughs> they must like it. And nine out of ten of them are probably cooking meth in the basement. I, I never even thought of that. Now mm -hmm. I'm going to check. Mm -hmm. In the UK, a mailman kept almost 31,000 pieces of mail because he was too drunk to deliver them over a three-year period. This sounds like all the mailmen in Kensington. Remember Jerry? No pun on you, Kurt. He also took money out of the cards and kept it. After people complained about not receiving their mail, he was investigated, and they found that he started his day at noon and finished it too. That's a great job. But can you imagine how many people were, like, calling their utility companies and say, I never got it, and they're like, yeah, okay. <laughs> like, they're all getting shut off. <laughs> people that shit. bought things and never received it and got charged, like, Three years, 31,000 pieces of mail and packages that he had in his so house. So over a three-year period, if he had 31 pieces of mail, how much mail was he averaging stealing per year? Ten. Ten. There you have it, folks. Ten pieces 10, of mail. Ten thousand. Not ten And on pieces. to the next story. You said thousand, so I said ten thousand. You know, don't try to trick me just because you're drunk. You can't be tricked. Are you the drink? Dr yeah, j -j 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 the drunk mailman. <laughs> I, could hey, I would pump. be so pissed <laughs> off if that was my mailman. Like keeping checks, keeping kids' birthday parties. Like families are look probably what the fighting. Fuck's... Look like, what saying, the. You didn't send my kid nothing for three years. You know what I mean? No birthday card, no nothing. Like estranged fathers that don't see their children, like that sent their support checks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, like yeah, he's in yeah. jail right now. Like you have huh. no idea what you did to these people. Like, in Radnor, though, police arrested two men who broke into a police van to take gag pictures and accidentally locked themselves inside. A friend found them in the van and called nine one one because he was unable to free them. <laughs> Police said the door must have been unlocked because there was no sign of forced entry. I came down and unlocked the door and dumb and dumberer pranced out of the van, said the officer. They were arrested and charged with attempted theft of a motor vehicle, public drunkenness, and criminal mischief. Why were they attempted theft? They didn't try to steal anything. Well, they were inside of it. And we went over this last week with the, with the, because it don't have your name on it. it you can just take it. Remember that list? That's basically the same thing. So you get but, charged. And it wasn't forced entry. But so. it doesn't matter. If, you're, if you know that that is not your vehicle and it says police on that motherfucker, <laughs> you know you ain't supposed to be in there. That's, you know, there's no mistake. Oh, I hope they got the pictures anyway. But at any rate, what the fuck were you thinking calling the fucking idiot friend to come down and couldn't open the, the door? <laughs> Break the window. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> fuck it. You're already getting locked up. Yeah, you're Ooh, already in trouble. It. Okay. A one-legged man used his boy as a clutch. Crush. Clutch. A clutch? Okay. What'd he do, put him in the transmission and every time he hit the fucking... Okay. Listen! The 39-year-old from South Africa would sit his son next to him and tell him when to press the clutch for gear changes. 
The driver had his leg amputated in 1996 after a gunshot injury. He's in trouble. Now he can't drive forever, they said. They took his license away forever. It wasn't bad enough. They took his leg away. Now, he took now his they took his license. And it was his left leg. So he had to sit the kid. That's right. Well, he could. That's what I thought. Why didn't well, he there just are have no automatic? automatic vehicles overseas, rarely. Like that. And he can't even ride a bike. They have pedals that you just push up and down. Oh, God. On menslifetoday.com, they gave you six signs that she's just not that into you. You have a better relationship with her voicemail than with her, is number one. If the only time you can ever get her on the phone is when you call her, and if she seems surprised that it's you when you, she finally answers, that's that's a sign. She's not that into you. Or when you get that text message that wasn't meant for you, <laughs> <laughs> and you get it. <laughs> number two, she cut you down with a crappy cliche. Here's an example. I'm just not ready to be in a relationship. Translation. She's not ready to be in a relationship with you. Number three, you can't find your way into her calendar. She's either working late, getting up early, going out of town, having her blood drawn. Clipping her nails. She talks dirty, but not about you. So she's like, oh, man, I really would like to do this and do that. And then he's like, how about we do that? And she's like, oh, no, not. Not with you. No, not with you. <laughs> Number five, the next time she laughs at one of your jokes will be the first time. If you think you're the king of comedy, but can't command even a couple of laughs from your intended queen, face it, funny boy. You're chasing after somebody who's laughing at you, not with you. Number six is she keeps telling you that you are so perfect for her sister. <laughs> Maybe it's not such a bad idea to meet her sister. Yeah, it could work out. Might end up with them both. Kenzo moments. Now it's time for our Kenzo Moment segment where we read what you write on our Facebook. Good or bad, we'll, we'll say it all. Who gives a fuck? Well, Carl Miller wrote, no spitting off the L platform. Who, di who didn't spit off the right. L platform? With our gum. Kathy Burr wrote, me and my bestie toured the old neighborhood at Christmas. It was the best time. You would be surprised how festive our old neighborhood was. The best had to be the two giant snowmen hung out a second floor window and the houses with the cages. Now they can hang some lights. Different color wrap around each bar. It was great. Rich Repash said, I remember when Kenston was lit up at Christmas time. So do I. So do I. Mike York said, my I, mom and... I remember that. <laughs> do you remember that? <laughs> my mom and dad are still in the hood. I was there the other day and someone on the block has a rooster. You can hear him at 4 a.m. Well, I were on my block on Ellis Street. There was a rooster for my whole entire life. Like... Up the street, we got used to that. It was. Well, they had chickens all in their yard. Did they come to snuff the rooster? Kathy Burr said, Kensington shrimp equals cheese curls. Kensington surf and turf equals Slim Jims and tuna fish. Well, she must have grew but, up in the fucking rich section. Yeah, and it was pretzels and ketchup, yeah, not yeah. cheese curls. We didn't have Slim Jims. We couldn't afford it. I love Slim Jims. Joan Schiffler wrote, my parents are from Kensington. Moved when they got married. My mom got homesick and moved us all back. Best childhood ever. Never had to worry about a thing. Everyone knew who you were. You were always safe. It sucks that we had to leave. About two years ago, my brother and I were going to try and buy the Schiffler house back. I guess it just wasn't meant to be. Steve Lee says, here's a thought not everyone's aware of. From Lower Kensington originally, but most of my growing up at Dane Allegheny, Edison High School, and the old Edison had more graduates die in Vietnam yes, yeah. than any other high school in the country. Talk about the ultimate sacrifice. That's right. Yeah. That's true, yeah. I've seen that. Up there. That's because we're badass. Kenzo's run right to the bullet. Yeah. Suzanne Quinn wrote, buying a new car and taking each neighbor for a ride around the block. Everybody did it. Too funny. That is so funny. That is because I, I also like to know where they grew up because we didn't have a car either. So. Well, we did. My dad got a van one time and it had like a bed in the back and all, and all the kids jumped in. And we just, can you just take us around the block? It was like so much fun just to get in a new car. But you also have to remember, gas was fifty-three cents a gallon back yeah. then. Yeah, now it's like twenty-two dollars yeah. a gallon. Also, the Sky Brady Band is looking for Kensington girls to appear on their new CD, due to re-release soon. So if you are a true Kensington girl, message me, send me your photo, and tell me why you should be on the CD cover. Like, why don't you just have, like, a free fall fist fight 
Whoever comes out with the, with the most teeth wins. You know, there you go. Them, you know? That's better than just writing a whole biography. And the ones with the most marbles the win. Well, I think I should be on the cover because I'm I'm a, I'm a Kenzo and I want to be on the fucking but cover. But that doesn't mean you should be on the cover because you're a Kenzo. I want to see. How what are the other requirements of being on the cover of Sky's? I will fucking CD. I will cross that bridge when I get there. You don't even know what you're. So doing. you have to try hard now. <laughs> Heather, what's going on? For Family Fun Day this week. You can go to Fantastic Fridays at Penn Treaty Park. August 5th, they will have a live concert featuring sensational soul cruisers and fireworks beginning at 6.30. It's fun for the whole family, and it's free. Ding, 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 ding. The African Festival, the Pico Multicultural Series, offers culturally rich outings for family and friends with a chance to explore the world without needing to travel to Africa. These festivals celebrate the diverse ethnic heritage that makes oh. Philadelphia unique. It's free. It's at the Great Plaza at Penn's Landing, Saturday, August 6th, from 2 to 8. See you there. You going to be there? Yeah. I'll be there. Ray Street Pier will be open from 7 a.m. to 10, no. To 11. To 11. That's a nice Great pier. Extended. Yeah, That's it's cool. New Park. Up down free there. Wi-Fi there. During the upcoming summer season, go down and see what the New Park has to offer. But no skateboarding or... Oh, they have, like, guards there. Probably no alcohol allowed. No dogs defecating or Greg Butcheroni defecating. <gasps> like. Join Watson Adventures on a unique hornet scavenger hunt. Armed with a flashlight, you'll visit ghost plague buildings and secret cemeteries while learning the stories of the restless souls you might disturb. Starring the spirits of 1776 in Independence Hall, Ben Franklin, of course... The Hag of Pine Street and Spectral Poltergeist of St. Peter's. That sounds interesting. It does. Washington Square Park is at 600 Walnut Streets at 7 p.m. It runs till August 27th. It's $22.50 a person. For more information, dial 877 946 4868. There will be a national white balloon release for Kaylee Anthony on August 9th for what would have been her fourth birthday. If you don't want to release a balloon into the air, you can just tie one up outside somewhere to show your support. If you would like to be on this show, complain about the show, or for any reason contact us, you can do so by emailing us at heather.therichieantapunashow at gmail.com slash double dot hyper super colon <laughs> http semicolon slash or Richie dot the Richie Antipuna Show at gmail dot com, and you can watch past episodes at the Richie Antipuna Show dot blip dot tv, or Kenzo News at scrapple dot tv, or go to youtube dot com and just type in Kenzo or Scrapple or or Heather, asshole Heather Barton and it'll show up. Um, slut, Heather Barton, um, slut, slut walk. I mean slut walk. That's it. Live, love, laugh. See you next week. Oh, we forgot our mugs today. Oh, let's do the whole show over again with the mugs. Shit. <laughs> well, it says Richie's colon. If you want to, if you're abbreviating shit, it says Richie's colon. That's so something we, I don't want to about think about. What are you talking about, my colon? You're just trying to hang out. I'm not joking. It says wax implants. Wax implants. These festivals celebrate the diverse... <laughs> <laughs> I want to put that word in every week now. If you don't want to release a boon. You don't release a baboon? If you don't. Don't make me laugh during this.